Okay guys, so I've just set the system status to down and I've got three split front end copies of this database running and they're already starting to shut down on their own. Um, the first one has gone down, the second one's gone down, and the third one should go down here. And that's what we're gonna look at today, how to kick users out of your Access database. In this episode, we're gonna take a look at those situations where you've got your Access database running in some office in a remote building or, or somewhere on your network and you've got you know however many users that have the system open and some of those users leave their system open uh, and then go home for the night and you have to go and go all the way up to some office or whatever and you have to shut it down for them so that it releases the locks on your access database and you can work on it safely and in today's video what we're going to talk about is how to make a scheme or a design where you have the option to take the system down and it gives the user a nice little message and then it shuts it down and you can watch all of the copies shut down um, across the network. Now there are a lot of reasons why you might want to have a remote shutdown option for your administration and those might include system updates or you might have a versioning scheme and, and it might be detrimental if users are using an old copy of the database and all kinds of things like that. And so you can have the option to shut those down and make sure that they get updates. Let's get to it. Want to join me and see additional content like this? Make sure to check out my Patreon. The link is in the description. Okay, so I've got this uh, folder here and it has a front end and a back end file which are empty. I've got a kick users back end. So we're going to simulate a split front end back end system today. And uh, so we're going to create one uh, system table in our back end and we're going to um, make sure that we have access to that from all of the other front ends. We're going to create a template front end as you can see here and then we're going to copy this front end into three different directories to simulate having it open on uh, several computers and and then we're going to uh, see if we can make those copies uh, shut down on their own by making a simple change in our back end table to an entry in our back end table. And so what we're going to do is we're going to create a new uh, table here and we're just going to, I'll just put in a status ID here um, so that we've got a uh, primary key and then I'm just going to create a, a field called system up and I'll make that into a yes, no uh, for for today, you can use an integer maybe or something else if you want to have different um, types of statuses to display to the user. But for today, I'm just going to save this here and I'll call it ZTBL system status. And oh, I didn't set my primary key, so I'll go ahead and I'll set that now. There we go. So I'll set that and then I'll save it. And so this could be some system table. Um, and uh, you can have the system table. I'll, I'll create a status ID here. Uh, you could have several different statuses if you want, but for today we're just going to use one. And we've got our system up indicator. And as long as this is set to checked, um, our system is up and operational, and no copies will try to shut themselves down. Um, Hopefully, uh, we'll see how this works today. And so we're gonna close that. That's our front end, or pardon me, that is our back end design. And we're gonna take a look at our front end design now. And for this, uh, we're gonna make a linked table. And so we'll go to external data, and then we'll choose from database, and that'll be our back end file that we wanna find and so we'll go ahead and choose our uh, C and then dev and then our kick users uh, folder, then our kick users backend. Um, 
there we go so we've got our back end selected and we are not going to take uh, import as the option we'll choose linked and then we'll just choose our system status table uh, simulating a front end back end system that has linked tables and now we can see in our front end file we can see that system up indicator uh, from the back end and so you might have 10 users or 30 users um, or more uh, depending on your system state uh, but all of those front-end copies can now see whether or not the system is up or not and so uh, what we'll do is we'll go to the create tab and now we're gonna simulate some kind of uh, system here uh, we're gonna have a form so you're gonna need a form and uh, what I'm going to do today is I'm going um, to create this simple little pop-up form. And uh, this is going to be the form that pops up and tells the user, um, you know, something's going to happen. Now, now, you do not want to use uh, a message box for this or some, some kind of uh, modal form because... Um, because this, we want this form to be able to close. We don't want it to hold the system open like a message box will. And, uh, and basically we want this to be um, something that'll pop up for the user and they'll be notified and then they'll see the system close after a certain amount of time. And so essentially this is going to be a simple form that will just sort of open and will display and in most cases uh, the user, in our use case, the user won't even be there. Uh, but if they happen to, to be using the system, they will see this. Now, we're going to use the timer on this. So notice that I went to the event tab for the form. And I'm going to open the code builder here. And this will open to our form timer event, uh, which is going to fire every every so many milliseconds. And so we're going to have one command in there. We're just going to say do command dot quit. You could also use a macro instead. If you don't want to use VBA, you can use a macro for this. Um, but it's very, very simple. You just put do command dot quit. And then we're going to, now I'm going to set this to 10,000 here uh, for the timer interval. Um, so it's going to shut down after 10 seconds. Now, normally some interval like 10 seconds should be just fine. It'll give enough warning to the user. You could go longer, but that's up to you. Okay, so there we go. Our system has shut down. That is our template system. So we've had a successful test of our uh, template system. You can see that it shut down after it gave the message there. And that is exactly what we want to see. And I think it might be nice for us to set that uh, warning message to a pop-up. So I think I'll do that now. And a pop-up is great, but make sure to check out my other video on how to set all kinds of other settings as well. Uh, now I'm going to make this into a pop-up, but I am not going to make it modal uh, for now. And you can also turn off the close, uh, the close, uh, like the little X button and things like that so that users can't really close it. Um, but I won't do that today. Um, you can do that under form properties. And so what we're going to do here now is now we've got our little system exit form ready and now I'm going to go to create and uh, new form design and I'm going to create a main menu and a fictional main menu here just to demonstrate. Uh, so I'll put main menu on here. Uh, you guys might have some other menu. Now this form is actually, you can have a choice here. So while I paste this in, I'm going to describe. Um, so these are fictional buttons and you don't have to worry about it. What you need to think about is which form this is. Now this is also going to run a timer. So you do not want to run the timer we're going to put on here. You do not want to run it on a form that has data entry in it because it could sort of uh, interfere with with uh, the user's data entry. Um, you want this to run either on a hidden form, so you could create a form that starts when the application starts and then it just goes invisible as soon as the application starts and it just runs in the background, or you can run it 
like we are seeing here, you could run it on a main menu that maybe gets set to visible equals false, gets set to invisible. Uh, when other forms are opened, you do not want to run this on a form that gets closed though. So if you close your main menu, when you go to different forms in your database, this is not the right place to put it. Um, if you just hide your main menu when you move to other forms, then uh, you could stick it onto your menu form. And so there are really kind of a couple options. You can set this as uh, a timer on your menu form, or you can have a form that opens immediately when the user opens the application, but hides itself and stays hidden for the duration of the user's session. Okay, so we've got our main menu form here, and we're gonna go to the event tab <clears throat> of our main menu. This is a menu that will uh, you know, open a form and then hide itself, but it will still remain open, allowing the, the uh, timer to continue to run. That's the main point. Um, and so we're gonna set that timer interval initially here to 60 uh, seconds, which is 60,000 milliseconds. And we're gonna run on that timer, we're gonna run an event procedure. Now that's a normal way of doing it because uh, you want this code to be as unobtrusive as possible. So 60 seconds is probably just about right. It'll run once a minute. 20, uh, 20 seconds is good for our demo today. Um, and we're gonna hit the ellipsis on the form uh, timer code and then we have our form timer event here that we can put some code into and I'm just gonna make a return value that will be a variant by default there when I say dim uh, var at val I'm gonna set that equal to our D lookup uh, we're just gonna look up that value in the linked table so we're looking at the back end uh, table and we're gonna see what the value is in our system status uh, table there. And so essentially every uh, 60 seconds or 20 seconds or whatever, our system's gonna go back and it's gonna check that status to see whether it should stay open or not. Now you could have additional um, statuses in that table. Um, so you might have other statuses that you use for other things. So you could put uh, a criteria in like status ID equals two or three and check that system status instead of this one. But for today's example, uh, we're going to just have the first one in the table, which is our, our uh, system status. And that's what the DLOOKUP is going to get for us. And once we have loaded a variable with the value from DLOOKUP, uh, we can uh, check that variable to see uh, what it is. Now, I like to use NZ on here, which I have in another video. Make sure to check that out. And that's gonna convert it in case it's null, something happened and, and that value is a null instead of a, a minus one or zero, which you would get from your checkbox, then it's gonna set it to zero. So now we know it is one or zero. And if it's a zero, meaning system is down, uh, we've set as an administrator, we have set the system to down. Then we're going to open that form saying system exit uh, which is going to open in front of the user and give them a little message saying, hey, you know what, the system's going to close in 10 seconds or whatever. And uh, that's really all we have to do there. It's just a few lines of code. Uh, and so we can save it. And uh, that's going to allow us to, uh, to close the system uh, and check the system and close the system. And so now we can open our form. So this is running in the background. Uh, we can see that the system is up right now. So every uh, every uh, 20 seconds that it checks, I think I put 20 seconds in for the check, um, it's checking to see whether the system is still up or not. And as you can see, the main menu stays open, the user's working in their system, and it's no big deal. Uh, we can see uh, there's our backend database there, and we can open that up. And, uh, and now I'll set it to not up in the, from the back end. And we should see here, uh, depending on how many seconds are left in the 20 seconds, there we go. So it was almost at the end of that loop. Um, we can see the system will exit in 10 seconds. 
and then it waits 10 seconds and then it auto shuts off um, shuts down uh, and uh, that is exactly what we want to see there and so what we could do to test this is we could go ahead and just do uh, you know create a new folder for workstation one and then uh, create a new folder for workstation two we're going to simulate other workstations opening um, that back end um, so now now we have sort of concurrent users as, as you should say I'm going to take that front end file that we created that's our our database front end <laughs> and we're gonna paste it into uh, each of these folders and uh, it's to simulate having users use the system and uh, and then we'll open each of those copies here in a second okay so there we go we've got our workstation one two and three and uh, we could go in and uh, we could uh, open the first uh, instance of that I'll minimize that so now we've got one user in. we've got another user in I'll hit enable on on that one and then we've got I uh, will get the uh, the next user so we've got three of the deployed front-end user copies are now open and uh, we will need to go back and open our uh, main menus for each of those which we will do here in a moment but first we need to go back to our back-end uh, database and we need to check to make sure that that system is up because we did a demonstration and we shut it down so we want to make sure that that is up and running so system status is now up and uh, now what we can do is we can go and uh, we can open each of these uh, systems okay and so we'll take system one that's in workstation one we'll open the main menu just as if a user was in there we'll open a main menu just as in workstation two and workstation three and now we've got it open in each of the three workstations uh, you can see one two and three there I guess I'll resize these so that we can see them all at once um, so there's our our workstation three and here we go workstation two I'll resize and then workstation one uh, you can see the the title uh, has which workstation it is in case you're wondering until I minimize it and then it disappears uh, but there we go okay so we've got three workstations open and uh, uh, I'll make that a bit easier to see um, and so now we, it, we kind of have the the effect of having three users in our system uh, using the front-end database and uh, so you can see one two and three and you know imagine that users are working away in there and now everybody goes home for the night and uh, they've left their systems open and uh, there might be data that's open there could be a lock file in this folder there wasn't right there at that moment uh, but um, you can see we can go to the back end uh, file of the database and check it out up here you can see uh, the back end uh, is there and we can uncheck that checkbox and set it to false and then we can restore the three windows that are already open uh, and there's one two and three you can see already the first copy is saying it's going to close um, and the second copy will also close and the third copy should close momentarily here and you can see how that will make your life a lot easier as an access administrator uh, running access databases in your company that's how you can kick all of your users out of your system looking for the files used in these videos make sure to check out my downloads page the link is in the description